Christian greetings, everyone, to the worldwide Truth Provided Broadcast. This is Nicholas from Presence of God Ministry doing my part as one of many watchmen on the wall. The clock is ticking, and the soon arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is one day closer to fulfillment. The website, where you can find all that I'm about to share with you and much, much more, is, of course, www.remnantofgod.org. You know, it appears lately that uh, we're seeing more and more attacks on free speech lately. And, and, and it's obviously par for the course as to what's going on in the world today. Um, and yes, it all stems from a um, Vatican's desire for global control. Speaking truth freely causes far too much harm to those speaking lies, seeing how it, they are the ones with the power, as fleeting and temporary as earthly power may be, well, they usually get their way. Well, so they think, you know. I mean, come on, and it's temporary, it's fleeting, and it's not going to last. Uh, the Vatican has moved, pushed, shoved, and manipulated the press and anyone else with public opinion to her end for the entire 1,469 years of its aggregated existence. And when I say aggregated, I'm talking about uh, the woman on the beast since 538 A.D. I know the Catholic Church says they've been around as a controlling entity, you know, a political and church entity for 2,000 years, but, well, that's a bold-faced lie. I mean, look in the uh, history books. It's just not there. So, showing a little muscle from time to time is something they feel is a good thing, especially when the flesh that they're looking to manipulate is so weak and easy to control when force is used. Yeah, it's a shot in the arm for them when the end results are laws passed that are designed to muzzle those with facts and figures on the true and first terrorist, the Roman Catholic prelates. With that said, let me share with you an article just came out a couple of weeks ago, May 2nd, 2007 to be exact, uh, written by Robin Pomeroy from Reuters, Rome, you know, reporting from Reuters. Uh, the headline reads, The Vatican Calls Verbal Attack on Pope Terrorism. The Vatican's official newspaper accused an Italian comedian on Wednesday of terrorism for criticizing the Pope and warned his rhetoric could fuel a return to 1970s-style political violence. In an unusually strongly worded editorial, the El Observatore Romano said a presenter of a televised May Day rock concert, which is sponsored by Italy's labor unions, had launched vile attacks on Pope Benedict in front of an excitable crowd. Well, first off, let me stop here for a minute. This was a comedian making the statements. And second, the crowd was excitable because it was a rock concert. The comedian was no governing official, Marxist, Marxist uh, rebel, or, or even a Mideast rebel, seeking to drum up support for yet another pie-in-the-sky prize for uh, global domination like those mad scientist flicks from the uh, 60s. He is a plain and simple comedian. And, and the crowd was no doubt excited due to the satanic music science has recently proven to have an adverse and quite stimulating effect on the human heart rhythm, which, of course, affects the human brain waves. You know, they weren't gathered in some town square with picket signs, pitchforks, torches, rifles, and megaphones looking to start a revolution. I mean, they're rocking out to whatever Satan planned for the night while slamming a few brews and no doubt a few grams of nose candy. You know, this is hardly a 1970s style anti war mob hell bent on a coup, now is it? Plus, let's not forget that a comedian is not a man that straps a bomb on his body and blows himself up in a crowd to gain points with Allah or so as to be assured a harem in the afterlife. I mean, how can a comedian, no matter how crazy he gets on stage, be compared to that? Well, when he angers the post-Inquisition Vatican, that's how. This article reminds me of one just a few years ago where the Vatican stated to the world at large that you are a terrorist if you claim Rome started the AIDS crisis. I got the article on my website. This older article tried to place the condom issue, you know, the one about the AIDS. They, they tried to place the condom issue as the reason people blame Rome for AIDS because the Catholic Church has a problem with condoms. Uh, instead of the fact that the Roman Catholic priests are dying of AIDS 11 times greater than any other group, that evidence, too, I have on the website at remnantofgod.org. 
Is it any wonder there's a gag order on all the court cases dealing with the Roman child rapists here in the state? I, I, I mean, I'm sure that they're, they got gag orders on all these uh, lawsuits that are going on globally, but I, I, I can't prove that. I know for a fact that's happening here in the States. You know, I mean, can you imagine the public outcry when it's made public? A child was not only molested but infected with AIDS by a Roman Catholic priest, and they know since they can put an, since they got a gag order on them, they know that they can uh, settle out of court, you know, behind closed doors kind of a thing, and keep it hush hush. They're losing billions due to this, okay? And 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 that alone, Mister or Mrs. Catholic, that alone should tell you something where your tithings is going if you tithe. Now, that's rare that Catholics tithe. I know because I was Catholic 29 years. We didn't tithe. I, you know, we just maybe gave a couple of bucks on Christmas or something or gave the priest something when you married somebody or buried somebody. But uh, all that money. I mean, when, you're, when the church is losing billions per year on these molestation scandals, you got to think the grand majority of the money is going to take care of that. Is that what you uh, signed up for? Anyway. The Vatican is using deception to gild the lily here so as to make the comedian's remarks much more than they actually are. Yes, what the man stated about the Vatican was true. And yes, Rome and most people that use the Internet to research such things know this is true. So they added the bells and whistles or um, uh, (laughs) bombs and bullets to his comments so as to make their claims of it being a terrorist act more viable. Keep in mind, they have the ear of over one billion Catholics now worldwide, and countless other churches that have joined their seven-year-old one-world church conglomeration. Their seventh anniversary is on June 26, 2007. This makes for a very lucrative source of molded public opinion, a gold mine of immense proportions, to say the least. And yes, this is how they plan to pit the entire planet against the remnant of God. You know, the ones that keep the Sabbath and understand prophecy. Word of mouth can be a very powerful tool when it is used by those educated in deception. This Vatican rhetoric is nothing more than another seeding to the already laden soil of anti-free speech propaganda. So many people far and wide know how bone evil these prelates in Rome are, that Rome has to do whatever they can to muzzle the truth coming from their lips. This is what leads to a police state in most countries. Rome feels they are about to lose control, so they flex their civil authorities to prevent a revolt. Strange how wilted the masses become when their creature comforts are threatened. In 1229 A.D., the Vatican burned Bibles, and for eons, actually, they burned Christians alive when they refused to give up the truth for pagan-slash-Vatican dogma. It has now been globally understood by most that understand this truth that John Paul II's Mia Culpa or his uh, apology, if you will, back in March of 2000, was a weak attempt to make nice-nice in all of this. And I guess the Vatican felt, since the Internet spawned the largest researchable uh, information platform known to man, where even in third-world countries you can have a, uh, free access to the Internet in, uh, in you know, Internet cafes, they, they had to make it appear the Vatican was sorry for all it did. They felt that hopefully when people later stumble across the numerous facts documented on and offline exposing the Vatican that they will have in the back of their minds that, well, you know, John Paul II apologized for that. Yet, shortly after that, they got caught lying again about the hundreds of thousands of molestations going on all around the world. No matter how much, you know, garbage that they sweep under the rug, it just, it it, it looks like they're hardly cleaning the room. the, The rug is getting huge. It's got this big lump in it, and the room is still filled with filth. They keep trying to cover it up. You know, the Vatican only responds when it feels it must. And this mea culpa was a shot in and from the dark, literally. Now now that the Internet appears to be such an ample threat to Rome, they need to flex yet another muscle so as to prevent another mass exodus from their churches, which, by the way, has been going on in the USA lately. Praise the Lord. You know, this is one of the reasons you see strange things like uh, thought police and talk of centering the Internet lately. Some will say, no, no, it's, it's the politicians that are behind that. And, and I say, yeah, well, you're right. However, what you fail to realize is politics was actually invented by Rome and for Roman interests, specifically international politics. If you read the oath of a Catholic priest, you will find 
in that, by the way, I have on the website, you will find that all prelates in Rome are devoted Roman politicians first and a Roman Catholic priest second. So yes, the politicians are behind it. Plus, you have to keep in mind that Rome controls the American Senate, the Congress, the Supreme Court, the White House, and, and it has done so for many years. Uh, the White House alone, for example, since Ronald Reagan. So all politicians on earth need to be well-educated in Roman ideals as a prerequisite for their career if they hope to make a killing in their chosen field of labor. Uh, pun intended. Uh, the Vatican is a literal cesspool of wickedness that has its tentacles in all aspects of public and private life now and most people know about it and don't like it. That's why it's always uh, religion and politics that spring up at water coolers and coffee clutches these last few decades. Everyone has an opinion on both to uh, topics, and it's more often than not negative. Now, this is something Rome fears and makes them feel out of control. There are far too many souls focused in on their fruits. Seriously, a comedian, come on, speaks about them off the cuff, and that bothers them? It's gotten that far. We're a comedian. Oh, come on, people, this is a comedian. This isn't the guy who sits down and researches this information as a calling, you know, something to do. He likes to attack the Vatican and then expose it as Antichrist. No, this is just some comedian. His main focus in life is to make people laugh. You know, there's a reason it gets their blood up. They're not going uh, to risk all of it over some insignificant comedian that makes a few statements at some rock concert, unless, of course, he's just one of millions doing it. Their approach to the problem is no different than the enthusiastic judge that wants to make an example of the first person arrested on a, like a new crime wave or whatever so as to prevent a rash of repetitive criminal acts in the community. We all know about it. You know, like, you know, like for example, when crack first came out and someone, the first person that gets arrested for crack, he gets an unbelievable uh, sentence. And now you get a couple of slaps on the wrist. Or when uh, they started arresting people for, you know, that stuff that uh, that blows up. I can't remember the name of it, but... You know, the first person they arrest, they always try to make an example to everybody else to let them know there's no, 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 don't, you know, don't do this or we're going to throw you behind bars and throw away the key kind of a thing. Rome and everybody with a brain knows one comedian does not a big problem make. It's the big picture that's making them respond. You know, they got their eyes on all of it because they want all of it. Kind of like the reason for Sunday laws being enforced in the near future. It's because of what we do as the remnant that generates the law to be enforced. Our efforts, which are, of course, blessed by the latter rain, which falls more abundantly, causes the Sunday-keeping preachers to fear the ever-emptying pews opening up before them. And since uh, March 7th of 2006, when George W. Bush put into writing that all churches with 501c3 tax-free status are now considered government agencies who have political power now to speak in legislative halls, well, since that day, now these pastors do have power, governmental power, to try to shut us up, like Rome. Or, as the prophecy calls it, the image of the beast was given life March 7th, 2006. It's a whole other radio broadcast on that one. But anyway, so like Rome, they know there is no biblical jurisprudence to their agenda, so they're going to use force, these Sunday-keeping pastors, when it comes to the Sunday law. So anyway, the continue, uh, let's continue on with the article. It says, this too is terrorism. It's terrorism to launch attacks on the church, it said. It's terrorism to stoke blind and irrational rage against someone who always speaks in the name of love, love for life, and love for man. Oh, by the way, this article that I posted in my uh, newsletter, uh, it was my May, yeah, May 2007 newsletter. I, I got it from uh, the Washington Post, but I guess uh, it got a little bit um, problematic for them, even though Reuters, a very reputable source, wrote it. Reuters still has it online, but the Washington Post pulled it. They even pulled it from their uh, archives. You can't get it on Washington. As a matter of fact, it looks to me like when I did a, ser a search on this, when I saw Washington Post pull this article, I searched at all the other big places like Fox News or MSNBC and stuff like that. I, s I can't seem to find this article anymore on there, except for Reuters. Uh, but all the other news sources that the mainstream media likes to tag uh, as fear mongers, conspiracy theorists, and stuff like that, they're all running the article. Hundreds of thousands of them are running the article. So what do you think is going to happen there? Well, the mainstream dropped it, so it must not be true. That's, what, that's how most of the pew potatoes or couch potatoes are nowadays. They're believing what they're hearing from their television sets. Anyway, in this article, they say it's blind and, and, and irrational rage okay, to speak against the church. So is that what my website's all about? Which, by the way, if you print it out, is over 6,000 pages of documented facts 
You mean to tell me that all those articles? And by the way, 6,000 pages doesn't mean 6,000 articles. Some pages have four or five articles each. Some have 10 or 15. Look at the Words of the Beast page. It's got maybe 20 or 30 quotes with the sources per page. So all those articles, all those authors, all those documented sources are nothing but blind in a rational rage. I mean, this is just one website, people. I'm only one voice out there. This is, uh, I'm not even mentioning the literal thousands of other, probably hundreds of thousands of websites out there with the same agenda to expose Antichrist. Yeah, you talk about a mass conspiracy theorist, Rome is it. What's worse, the Vatican stated all this is being done against the organization that, that only speaks in the name of love, love for life, and love for man. You've got to be kidding me. Let me ask any and literally all of you listening, not, both Catholic and non-Catholic alike, let me ask you a simple and quite obvious question. Do the following Vatican-inspired and other words echo that st- sentiment that I'm about to read to you? Does the Vatican truly speak in the name of love, love for life, love for man? This first quote comes from the Western Watchman. It's a Catholic publication posted on November 21st, 1912. Stated, on August 24th, 1527, Roman Catholics in France by prearranged plan under Jesuit influence murdered 70,000 Protestants within the space of two months. The Pope rejoiced when he heard the news of the successful outcome. Same publication, December 24, 1908, said, The Catholic Church has persecuted. When she thinks it's good to use physical force, she will use it. Will the Catholic Church give bond that she will not persecute? The Catholic Church gives no bonds for her good behavior. This uh, next one comes from Cardinal Bellarmine's famous champion of Romanism, cited by Schumacher on page 76. He said, Experience teaches that there is no other remedy for the evil but to put heretics, and by the way, on March 20th or March 12, 2000, Pope John Paul II called everybody that was a not, non Catholic a heretic. So Protestants are heretics, according to him. But he said, uh, this Cardinal said, But to put heretics to death. For the Roman Catholic Church proceeded gradually and tried every remedy. At first, she merely excommunicated them. Afterwards, she added a fine. Then she banished them. And finally, she was constrained to put them to death. Now, why do you suppose that is? Because truth affects the heart of a seeker of truth. This is like the Council of Valencia in the year 1229 A.D. That's why they burned Bibles, because... When you really have an honest desire to understand truth and you find it, you leave the Catholic Church. Well, they can't have that. So if the Bible's causing people to leave, burn the Bibles. And if the people won't shut up about their faith and that's causing people to leave the church, kill them. Next quote. This one comes from W.E.H. Leckie's History of the Rise and Influence of the Spirit of Rationalism in Europe, Volume 2, page 32, 1910 edition, and an excellent, though lengthy, article describing in detail the right of Roman Catholic Church to do this will also be found in the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 12, page 266. It says that the Church of Rome has shed more innocent blood than any other institution that has ever existed among mankind will be questioned by no Protestant who has a competent knowledge of history. Competent knowledge, okay? Everybody out there, you know, you, you know, you claim people like me or anybody else that preaches this message, we're Catholic bashers. Yet we source everything we share. Absolutely everything we share shows a competent knowledge of history. I'm not going to put hearsay on the website. If I wanted to put hearsay on the website, it would be 18,000 pages, not just six. But I won't allow hearsay and opinions and possibilities on the website. I've got to double-check things. Otherwise, they will have evidence that I'm just some basher. But continuing on with the quote, it says... It is impossible to form a complete conception of the multitude of her victims, and it is quite certain that no powers of imagination can adequately realize their sufferings. Uh, This next quote comes from the Public Ecclesiastical, Volume 2, page 142, of course, a Vatican document. It says, The Church may, by divine right, confiscate the property of heretics, there's that word again, imprison their person, and condemn them to flames. In our age, the right to inflict The severest penalties, even death, belongs to the church. There is no graver offense than heresy, therefore it must be rooted out. And I got dozens and dozens more of these. You can go to my uh, beast or words of a beast page on the website. I believe it's in the warning section, the first section on the you know that menu on the left. 
This quote here is from the Catholic Church, the Renaissance and Protestantism, pages 182 and 183. It says, The rector of the Catholic Institute of Paris, H.M.A. Balderet, revealed the attitude of the church and her leaders towards persecution. When confronted with heresy, he said, she does not contend herself with persuasion. Arguments of an intellectual and moral order appear to her insufficient, and she has recourse to force, to corporal punishment, to torture. By the way, corporal punishment is death sentence. But the word torture here was used, and was first used by Roman prelates in history. And by the way, your Bible... I don't care if it's Catholic or non-Catholic Bible. In Luke chapter 3, verse 14 says, Do violence to no man. You can't get much blunter than that. You know, truth is, many believe and will believe the lies of Roman Catholic prelates simply because they feel holy men of God are speaking. Most won't bother to look into the Vatican archives, historic records, libraries, uh, the Internet search engines, or even their local newspapers to see if the Vatican is lying or not. Our job is clear. Get them to look. Sad fact is, reality also declares the fruits of this evil organization to be quite deadly, to say the least. You know, do a bit of research, and you'll find every modern war to date has been a direct result of Vatican desires being shunned by those annihilated or internationally restrained. It's not just a global level either. We see this with the comedian. Rome will go as local and personal as it takes to show their bloodstained teeth. Case in point, headline. Radio announcer who criticized Catholic station in Costa Rica killed in ambush. The Associated Press reporting back on July 8, 2001 from San Jose, Costa Rica. I'm just going to read a little excerpt out of here. It says, a popular radio host known for his caustic humor and unflinching criticism of public officials was shot and killed outside his house just days after he complained of receiving threats. Parmenio Mendina Perez was shot three times at close range Saturday, about 300 feet from his home in Heredia, six miles outside of the capital, the Costa Rican Attorney General's office said. No suspects had been detained. Do you think there's ever going to be any? Anyway, going on, it says, but authorities said they would base their initial investigation on a complaint Medina filed with them that he was being threatened. Medina, a native of Colombia, had lived in Costa Rica for many years and was known for his sports show, The Kick, which later became a critical forum. One of Medina's most recent targets was Radio Maria, run by a Catholic priest, Minor D. Jesus Calvo. So, Rome knows they cannot use a Bible to prove themselves to be of God because the Word of God can never sanction such wickedness. No brainer, okay? They know they can't use that book. That's why they attack it. That's why they burn it. That's why they say the Bible is a dead and speechless book. That's their exact words, by the way. Go to my Words of the Beast page and look up the one section that talks about hatred of the Scriptures or hatred of the Bible. There's quite a few t quotes there, too, about what they've openly said about that holy Word of God. You know, This is why they attempt to rewrite Bibles, by the way, to hide some of the obvious facts brought out in Scripture. This is also why they killed so many during the Dark Ages for simply reading Bibles, because, you know, before they had the opportunity to rewrite them. Rome thinks the only method that appears to work on some is to threaten them and, yes, even kill them. Problem is, there is always another Christian in the ranks ready to proclaim the third and fourth angels' messages of Revelation 14 and 18. Soon the Vatican will be successful in making free speech illegal, and ministries like mine will be shut down in a multitude of ways all around the world. Some of us will be tagged terrorists and placed in prisons. Some will be tortured, and yes, some will even have to die. Even so, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Well, that's it for today, folks. I pray the Lord blesses you and yours with the desire to be the Christian he created you to be. Thank you for listening, and remember, the truth is provided in the Word of God. <laughs>